What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex. In this video, I want to go over my NHL 20 tips and tricks. Now, I'm going to be making a ton of videos on NHL 20. I do just want to say in the very beginning of this video that if you guys want me to cover anything specific uh, about teaching you about how to play this game, um, definitely let me know in the comments below. In this video, we're going to kind of go over everything, kind of a loose, you know, this is generally how you should play the game. Now, this is for multiplayer in general. So, this is online modes. This is NHL 3s, which I really really do love that mode. I've loved it ever since they've introduced it. Um, but it's going to be talking about everything. So offense, defense, transit, all those kind of things. Um, if you want me to make a more specific video on something, again, let me know in the comments below. So here's the deal. NHL games and this NHL game has added quite a bit of stuff. We've talked about that in the past. I actually made a video talking about all the you know the new additions that this game would be adding, the the transitions, um, the signature shots, you know, deking, all, all sorts of things like that. At the end of the day, though, the multiplayer, like how you play NHL, is pretty much the same that it's always been. So you can take these things from past games and use them here. So let's go over the things you guys need to do. These are the number one tips and tricks that you guys need to do in order to win these games. And like I said, I mean, I've mean, i I've been playing this game since NHL 10. Just to show you guys you can trust me, um, I have a very, very high winning percentage. Basically every single year I've ever played NHL uh, multiplayer. I, I think I would you know say that I'm an above average player by a lot. And obviously I have this platform to be able to teach you guys. So let's go with offense first. And really, this actual first thing is something you do all throughout the ice is protecting the puck. This has never changed from any NHL game for the most part. In fact, it's kind of been added to over the past couple years is protecting the puck, keeping the puck away from your opponent. And obviously, there's a lot of ways to do this. And this game has, again, added ways, um, added additional ways in order to do this. Passing is insanely important. Puck protection in general when you have the puck is extremely important. Now, in these modes, most of the time, people will just come right up to you, okay? You, you'll you be going down the ice, and yeah, you'll have those like fancy deeks and stuff, but if you really want to win, the best way to win is to simplify your game. You can have deeks, and there's definitely ways to get around people and doing very, very quick deeks to get around people, but what I find is people online tend to go for the charging approach to hitting you. Sure, there'll be some people that'll do the poke check. Sure, there'll be some people do the, the you know stick lifting, but a lot of people will end up kind of just charging you. So protecting the puck in those situations is you know, make or break because if you lose the puck there, if your player gets hit, puck is going the other way. So the best way to do this is to pass as often as as you deem um, uh, available to you. Okay, you don't want to make passes out of nothing for sure, and it's not necessarily like real hockey. There's no real point to kind of cycle the puck around the boards like towards the goalie. That doesn't exactly work in this game. Now, getting the puck to the defense to get a shot from the blue line that is a thing that you do generally. Want want to try to do. Um, but at the same time, you don't want to force your passes. Now, you do want to pass. You want to pass as often, and especially in NHL 3s, you want to pass as often as humanly possible. Passing, you know, it's definitely good. Now, online modes, generally, the passing and, and just everything about it, it's a little bit slower than the actual if you're playing it offline. Um, it's more like precise where if you you know, kind of mess up your angle, it's not going to go exactly where you want. And that's with passing, that's with skating, that's with shooting, that's with everything in this game. Online, it's a bit more strict to make it kind of more realistic. But passing is good, and like I said, protecting the puck. Now, I honestly rarely see, and I made a video two years ago on NHL 18 talking about this, and I still don't see enough people do it. And now with the deke shots that they've had in this game, it's even better. The protecting the puck where you kind of drag the puck to your diagonal back, so your diagonal uh, right backwards or your diagonal left backwards, depending on which hand the, the player is, is very, very important because, you know, the game has made an emphasis over the past couple of years that if you're a good player, if you're a solid player or a strong player, it's harder to hit. If you're pressing the protect puck button, which is like X on um, PlayStation and A on Xbox, if you're pressing that and, and they do that kind of thing where they, they push the puck off on their stick and you and you direct it with the right analog stick, that is the best, honestly, the best way to do it. And you can do small deeks from that and now you can shoot from doing that and it would be a, it'll be a little bit better than what it would have been in the past. Now I don't suggest making shots, you know, from this, but this is a good way of doing it. But honestly, I have rarely seen people do this in all my years of playing and it's what I do nonstop. 
and it works nonstop, okay? One of the last things I'll talk about in terms of offense, I want to get to defense really fast, is shooting. Not wasting shots, and obviously this game, again, has made a lot of improvements of the signature shots and the best players, you know, they have their shots. One-timers have been kind of improved where they'll they'll kind of work themselves into better one-time situations. So, you know, the, the, the core and kind of the surrounding of the core of those mechanics have been improved, which is great, but the, the, the premise is the exact same that it's always been. Taking bad shots isn't exactly worth it, especially now with the goalies being better able to kind of direct the shots out of the way. So you don't want to take kind of those lazy shots. Again, that kind of working it and trying to find the best situation. And, you know, obviously when you make the pass, you switch those carrot, you switch to that player. So obviously you want to try and move your players into the right situations. But, you know, taking shots that are productive, taking shots that you think can actually lead to something, but not wasting your shots. Now, before I go into defense, a couple other really, really good tips and tricks that I, watching people play, and I've kind of always have known this that people just do not do this, and I and watching people online, um, even on YouTube, has definitely made that point even bigger to me. Change your own lines. I don't know why people don't do this. Players get tired. Players get slower when they're tired. For all you know, the shift could last a couple minutes. Now, yes, players in the game can obviously last longer than players in real life. They can last a minute and a half, two minutes. But the longer they're out there, the less they're going to be ready to go. So if you want a quick transition out and you want to get some offense time, but you've been in the defensive zone the whole time, your players are going to be super tired. Knowing when to change your lines, that's different. That is you actually kind of have to have that hockey mind where when you're going on the offense, you're changing your defenseman right and then when in and then as they're coming back or when you kind of see the opportunity to then you change your offense right then that's just generally how you do it in hockey you don't change everybody uh, as they're coming down into your zone otherwise it's going to be a five on oh rush so changing your own lines though is insanely important and it's make or break in terms of you can either have players with full energy and ready to, to roll and ready to be very, very fast, or you can have players that are at the very end of their shift and they have players that are at the beginning of theirs. I don't see enough people doing it. Barely anybody does it, and obviously that's an important thing. Defensively, and this is pretty easy, is sticking with your guy and trusting the AI. It's kind of a long one. Trusting the AI when you need to trust them, but also consistently switching players. And, and that, So that's a lot there. But basically, it is sticking to your own guy. You stick to the person on their team with the puck unless, here's the deal, unless you see a situation that they can have an easy pass and shot. And this is what I've always seen, and I, and I hope that every year that the games get better and better with allowing the AI to figure this out, but the AI still has trouble doing this. When their player is kind of cycling or doing kind of like a, a small circle in the corner or wherever they are, and they're ready to pass it in front of the net to one of their players, if you're that guy that's chasing their player with the puck currently, your AI has, I'd say, a 50-50 shot of of accurately and like effectively covering the guy who the puck will eventually get to. Okay, so for the most part, you do want to stay on your guy, the guy with the puck. So you want to consistently be changing players when they're changing players. Poke check, you want to use it as effectively as you can without getting, you know, without tripping the player, uh, lifting their stick, same thing. But you want to stick with them. Eventually, they will mess up. They will mess up, especially if you're super close to them. And that's what I kind of find. That's obviously why fast passing is good. But, you know, defensively, these are kind of the tips and tricks for defensively. But, again, the most important thing is when you see a high danger situation occurring, and honestly, you only see that the more you play the game, the more you, I guess, understand hockey. Literally, you just look for the open guy on their offense that you think that they'll eventually look to pass to to make an easy shot. And that guy you want to cover immediately, and that's what I will honestly always do. Cover their guy with the puck until you see a dangerous situation, then let go of the guy you you currently have, the guy that's covering their guy with the puck. Let go of him. Let the AI do that part, and you cover the guy who's going to have the, the dangerous opportunity. Because more likely than not, the puck will end up making its way to that guy. You'll either intercept it, maybe you are in a better situation to block it, Maybe you'll be able to hit that guy. Maybe you'll be able to poke check the puck on its way there. You have a lot of opportunities to stop the puck from getting to that guy. 
Again, though, chances are the AI won't do that. They could, and they have, and honestly, in the past couple of years, I say the last three years, they've gotten a lot better with it, where they maybe will defend that guy. Obviously, with the new kind of like stick lifting or like the, the, you know, the fighting for positions in front of the goalies, the AI are more likely to do that. But still, that's kind of, I feel like the AI has that bubble right in front of the goalie. They'll handle that situation. But if the guy's a little bit further out, maybe towards like the face-off circles, or even, you know, depending on the situation depending on one of that player set the AI may not be smart enough to take that player out that's where you come in so I think those are my general tips and tricks I feel like that kind of covers you know generally what you need to do offensively and defensively let me know again though guys in the comments below if you want me to make a more specific video I could cover NHL threes I could do more things just offensive I can do things just more defensive I'm definitely up for you know what you guys want me to make videos on um, but let me know in the comments below make sure you guys subscribe to our YouTube channel podcast now hit that bell icon icon so you guys know when these videos go up and thank you as always for watching and i hope to see you all on the next video